Hello, everyone, and welcome to those that have just joined the webinar. We're just waiting for some uh, people to join. The, we can see the numbers still going up at the moment. So we'll get going in a minute or so. My name's John Slow. I'm a director at Delta, and I'm joined by our uh, EV team here at Delta. So Senna McGrath, uh, Kate Armitage, Matty Kahola, and uh, also with me are Alexander Lewis-Jones and William van der Beyl. So we're very excited to be uh, talking with you all today. We're uh, pleased you're able to spare your time out of your busy schedules to join us and hope that you come away from the webinar mm -hmm. having learned some new things, heard some new, new perspectives, uh, and that stimulates some new ideas and thinking for you. We're hugely excited about this topic. Um, we think it is one of the biggest uh, changes coming to the downstream electricity sector in, in recent times. And lots of opportunity and some potential threats as well. Uh, so we'll be telling you more about how we see these. Okay, we'll just give it about another 30 seconds before we get started. Uh, while we do that, I'll ask uh, my colleagues to introduce themselves. So, uh, starting with Kate, who's down on the south coast of England at the moment. Hello, Kate. Can you hear us okay? Yes, I can hear you very well. Good morning, everybody. Uh, my name is Kate Armitage. Uh, I've recently joined uh, Delta as an associate working uh, on the electric vehicle side. Uh, I've been working on EVs. Uh, since 2010, so uh, involved very closely with EDF Energy, uh, managing the electric vehicles team there till 2014. Uh, and more recently, I have been um, uh, working on the uh, fleet side and software side, looking at optimization of fleets and electric vehicles. Thanks very much, Kate. Um, and then Senan. Senan uh, normally resides in Ireland, but I think you're currently in Switzerland, if if I remember right, Senan. Yes, I'm. Uh, I'm. I'm in Geneva at the moment. Um, I, for many years, I worked with ESB uh, in in Dublin, and I was very involved in in setting up the electric vehicle charging infrastructure in Ireland. I first started working with electric vehicles uh, this time around about 2007, 2008, although I previously worked with electric vehicles on European projects back in the late 1970s. Uh, I, in recent years, I served as the chair of Euroelectric's um, electromobility working group and in that capacity represented all the utilities of Europe in dealings with the European Commission and the European Parliament on to do with the electrification of transport. The Commission also appointed me as their special advisor on electricity as a transport fuel to their sustainable transport forum. I, and I was also the inaugural chair of the, uh, um, a group set up in Brussels uh, to um, uh, to lobby the Commission particularly on upcoming legislation in relation to electromobility. So I have a lot of uh, experience, both technical and political, in relation to electromobility. So I'm very happy to be working with Delta uh, on, on this project. Thank you. Thanks very much, Senan. So uh, a challenge to the audience, if anyone has uh, more years and experience than Senan, in electric vehicles, who started looking at it in the 1970s, maybe you can send us a, a, a chat message. <laughs> um, so welcome everyone, let's get the, the webinar formally started now. We'll run for uh, around 40 minutes, the webinar will be recorded, uh, you're all on mute, and we can make the slides and recording available to you afterwards. If you want to communicate with us, the best way to do that is using the, the questions box or the chat feature on the right hand side on the webinar control panel, which you should see. Um, we will try and get back to you on questions that you ask. And if we don't, we will come back to you after the webinar. So the agenda for today, 
uh, you can see on the screen now. And we'll first of all describe a bit about what we understand the interface to be. Uh, some very short background about us, and then moving on to points three and four, the main content of the webinar. Uh, so as I said, please do ask questions um, or make comments using the, the questions or chat feature. We will get back to you during the webinar if we can, and if not, afterwards. And let's move on now to the interface. So uh, I'm sure there are lots of different ways to describe the, the interface between electricity and electric vehicles. This is one uh, framework that we've developed. So on the top left, you can see different types of EV customers. Um, on the bottom left, the different places where they might charge. On the top right, the electricity values. So selling electricity, the flexibility of, uh, that electric vehicles will provide, and the infrastructure associated with, with charging electric vehicles. And then at the bottom right, the, the different market roles. And for us, this is, I think this framework helps to bring out why this is such a fascinating area and why it will be have such a big impact on the electricity sector. There are big questions about where and when and how people will charge in terms of the location. There are lots of different types of players. There's the incumbent electricity sector and a whole range of other players. So working out who's going to play in which part of the value chain is a fascinating question. And the values around flexibility uh, is hugely relevant, not just for the EV electricity interface, but for others in the, in the electricity sector who have their eyes on the, the flexibility price. So we'll come back to this as our framework uh, during the webinar, but hopefully it gives you a bit of a sense of how we're looking at this sector. And if we move on to the next slide now, um, we can tell you a bit about the opportunities and threats that we see. So on the left-hand side, the opportunities. The obvious one is there'll be a lot more demand for electricity and new charging infrastructure, new sources of flexibility, uh, ability to, to win new customer relationships or grow existing ones, and lots of indirect sources of value, not just for electricity sector players, but for others as well. But on the right-hand side, depending on how people charge, there might be very spiky demand on the electricity value chain. There might be big, well, there will be pressures. It's a bit open question as to what type of pressures and the nature of the pressures, but there'll be pressures on distribution networks. And there will be a big battle for the customer, not just the EV customer, but potentially the electricity customer in the wider sense, not just the EV charging. So we'll tell you more about these as we go through the webinar. Now, it's an interactive webinar in that we have a number of polls. So uh, we'll move on to a next poll in a minute. But just to say on the polls, the voting, uh, your votes are confidential. No one else uh, on the webinar will know uh, who you voted. So we encourage you to take part in the polls. And the feedback we get is it's quite a nice way to get a sense of how other people are thinking. So the next slide, uh, if we move on to that, we then see um, a question for you around where electric vehicles will charge. Um, now, we've presented four options to you. These are not the only four options, and these are not our four predictions. These are merely four different options for uh, to get reactions to in terms of how electric vehicles will charge in the 2020s. So don't think 2021, think more 2025 to, to 2030. So we'll launch the poll, and you need to just choose which option you think is the most likely. Yeah, and maybe to quickly kind of describe what, what we mean by the different options. The option one you have there at the top would be roughly where we are today in terms of charging, might be even a bit higher for the home charging. Um, then option two would present our move more towards public charging, seeing a lot of the investment happening in, in public charging infrastructure and also uh, increasing investment in workplace charging. Whereas option three would be a very broad mix of charging. It would happen uh, across locations, uh, across destination, public charging, workplace, 
and would also represent the fact that loads of people without access to um, at home charging, maybe not access to off street parking, would be would be having EVs. Um, and then option four would be a bit similar to what we have today. That a lot of the charging would happen in, in petrol stations and, and with the emergence of ultra fast charging. Um, so with those options in mind, I'll now launch the poll. And so uh, you should be able to see the four options. We can see you voting. Um, and uh, in 10 or 20 seconds, we'll publish the results. 50% of you have voted already. Uh, now it's over 60%. Um, and now over 70%. So maybe five more seconds to make your vote. It's all confidential. Um, we're almost at 80%. And let's now publish the results. So these should come up on the screen. And we can see, have we got them on the screen, Matty? Yep. Yes. Uh, so we can see an interesting split, actually. Um, the majority think that option two, but with an interesting split between option one and option three. And one in 10 people uh, thinking option four. So clearly some differing views as to what the future will look like. Thanks, Matty. Um, if we move on now, we have one more poll. Um, so you remember these three values from an earlier slide. And the question here will be, which type of company is going to capture most of these or the biggest part of these values? So uh, we'll present to you some different options for different company types. And uh, the question is, who will capture the most value from the EV and electricity system interface? So uh, you can vote in the same way. And we're now over 30% have voted, over 50% over votes are coming in quickly. Um, we'll give you a few more seconds to make your votes. Uh, we can see an interesting split. We're almost at 80% again. OK, let's publish the, uh, the answers. And again, a really interesting split. So um, interesting that the majority isn't incumbent electricity retailers or even new entrant ex electricity retailers. Um, car companies, not so pe people not that confident that they'll, they'll be playing strongly in this space. Um, Nissan might choose to disagree. We'll see. Um, but again, an interesting a range of opinions. OK, these poll results will be available to you all in the slides as well. So uh, moving on and keep, trying to keep to time, if we move to the next part of the agenda, uh, a very quick introduction just for those of you that don't know us and know Delta. Um, so. Uh, this is a team that um, some of you at the beginning will have heard Kate and Senna speak. Um, my colleague Matty spoke about the charging options. So we've got a really, I think, a really strong and diverse uh, EV team. If we move on now to the next slide. Uh, this is really what Delta is about. So our mission is to help clients move from old energy to new energy. And you can see we work at the bottom with a wide range of energy companies and technology companies, some transport companies, and even telcos across Europe. And we do that in primarily two ways. At the top, you can see a mix of research services and multi-client studies available by, for subscription. And at the bottom, uh, consulting. And about half of our work is at the top and half of our work at the bottom. Uh, the electric vehicles work is really a natural extension of what we've been doing around some of the other groups that you can see on this slide. And then in addition to, to the work we do um, more of the, on, on, on the research side of things, we also annually host a few, few different summits. Um, I personally, some of you may know me, uh, manage our research around the Connected Home. And, and this year we'll be hosting again our European Digital Energy Summit. Um, this event will be this year happening on the 25th and 26th of April, and 
first time in Edinburgh in our hometown. The picture on the screen you see there is not quite the view from our office, but if you walk at the furthest corner of our office, you can get a glimpse of the castle. So, you know, we're not far from the castle. Um, and at the event, day one, we will be really focusing on how we can drive value in the energy industry from using customer data and, and exploring those um, that area. Whereas day two is focused on, on my specialty area around the connected home market. And on the screen there, you can already see um, list of the, some of the speakers we have lined up for the event. And if you want more details, there's also a link to the web page, which has, has the program and, and speakers listed as well. Thanks very much, Matty. So hopefully you know, you all have a, a good sense, if you don't know already, of where we're coming from and uh, who we are and what we do. So let's now get onto the, the meat um, of the presentation. So focusing first of all on how people will charge. Um, you can see on the left hand side the, the different options that uh, we were in the, the mix earlier when you were voting. And on the right, some of the opportunities and challenges. So um, there are some quite clear opportunities for infrastructure investment. Uh, if you're an electricity retailer and your customers stay with you, then if they charge at home or at work, then you'll be selling more. And potential growth in asset base for network operators. Uh, but there are a number of threats. And Senan, I wonder if you'd like to just uh, say a few words from your background as uh, working with a network company and with utilities across Europe as your perception of the threats. Yes, well, from my dealing with uh, electricity, um, the, the distribution side of, of uh, utilities, I find that th there is a, quite a wide divergence of views as to whether the electricity, whether the electric electricity is an opportunity or a threat. Even within the one company, th there is a tendency of people whose whose focus is uh, distribution network planning to immediately think of the uh, electric vehicle as a challenge because particularly if it needs to, to charge at rates of anything above three kilowatts, if you're talking about some kilowatts, say in a domestic situation, or if you're talking about 22 or 50 kilowatts or even higher, the focus immediately is that's going to be a problem. Yes, a lot of strategic people in distribution utilities are saying, well, no, there, there may well be problems, but having a 22 kilowatt load that I could switch off is actually, could be an opportunity. So I, I think that it's, there are definitely going to be some distribution uh, changes, but in addition to the challenges, there are significant opportunities likely to, uh, to come in, the, uh, in this market. Um, so I think that is, that is probably the, 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 the most important, that there is unanimity of view and a change even within the company, depending on your perspective within the one company. And both sides, from my experience, are current, but because they've been, another point, and the, the challenge for the utilities is to understand, uh, well, which, which view should predominate from their point of view. Thanks very much, Senan. Um, and I think some of the, the uncertainty around where people will charge that we saw reflected earlier makes it very difficult, particularly for network companies, to plan when, where and how they need to invest. Um, also, as I said, for electricity retailers, if most of the charging takes place at public or uh, public charging, then they won't necessarily pick up that revenue from increased electricity sales. So lots of uh, implications of what the future charging mix will look like. So if we move on now, um, we're going to 
look now at some of the, the key questions we're looking at in our research that will shed light on this. Uh, Matty, I'll pass it over to you to, to talk a bit about this. All right, thank you, John. So um, in, in the work we're doing around EVs, we're conducting two different multi-client studies. And the first one will be focusing specifically around the question of what will future charging infrastructure look like and how will people be charging? Um, so really, from the opportunities and threats outlined there by John and Senan in the previous slides, um, to answer these questions and understand and shed a bit of light on these, um, we're really looking to explore where and at what speeds future EV owners would prefer to charge. We're trying to understand when is this charging likely to happen? So at what times, which of course has a big implication for, for the networks uh, and, and the strain that is put on the networks. Um, what are the key factors that impact customer preferences and choice around where they charge? For instance, are they very sensitive to price or is, is that a non-issue considering that you know uh, the miles or kilometers you drive on an EV are on average quite a bit cheaper than mm -hmm. on running on petrol? And at the end of the day, we want to understand what the future charging infrastructure mix um, might look like in, in the 2020s. Um, but when we look at the current EV adoption, we're still very much within the innovator phase of the technology adoption. And, and I think our focus really in a study is, you know, in that next 15% of EV buyers, which would be that early, early adopters and moving much more into the mainstream. Um, because our, our hypothesis is that what we see in the market and from current EV owners at the moment is likely to not be a very good good forecast on and represent the future very well because those people are probably not very representative of the of the average average car driver or, or an average person that who's driving an EV in the 2020s. And so then the question of course comes, okay, how are we how are we trying to do this? Um, we can be conducting some, some primary research. So we'd be using our smart energy customer panel um, that we've done a lot of custom research in, in the energy sector before. Um, so it's going to be a survey of around 1,000 UK um, people who are we deem to be likely to buy um, an EV in the future. So the first step is looking at um, British drivers who are willing to buy an EV, interested in willing to buy an EV in the next 10 years, so within within our time frame. Um, we'll filter these people and, and have these people answer a survey. Um, this questionnaire will be developed by Delta um, to utilize our experience around doing both doing customer research, but also understanding really what the interface and interaction between uh, the electricity, electricity system and EVs would be. So really uh, using our expertise there to ask the right questions. One of the uh, things we're very conscious of is people that don't have an EV will find it difficult to uh, state sometimes what their preferences will be. So we think we can address that by, uh, or partially address that, by looking at their attitudes and behaviours today. Because one thing that doesn't change is attitudes. Uh, Matty, do you want to say just a couple of words about that? Yeah, so in in, in the survey, we'll of course, be looking to understand um, Current habits around travel and the needs people have for for their for their vehicle and, and what type of travel they can really usually do in, um, but also current behaviors also um, in terms of not actual behavior but attitudes and how they view let's say refueling uh, and the behavior that I think can give us pretty good insight on what the likely future behavior could be and could look like, and then of course if we vary information like what's the pricing what's the location we can get people's uh, understand how important these factors, these different factors are. So, for example, some people today will quite happily let the needle get into the red zone before they refuel. Other people may never let the needle go below halfway. Some people will care most about convenience and just refuel at the nearest petrol station. Others may drive 10 or 15 minutes out of their way to get uh, cheaper petrol. So mapping this onto the likely EV buyers and their characteristics, um, we think can tell us quite a lot. And once we have, have the survey responses, we're then gonna analyze these responses and do customer segmentation. Um, in here, we have an example of, of four segments. It might be it might be three, it might be five, it, whatever the data tells us. And this segmentation will be based on uh, people's demand for charging. So we'd segment people based on the different um, demand they have for different types of charging and charging location. 
Um, so examples could be uh, price sensitive home chargers, um, people who start a petrol station, so basically carry on with their current habits and so forth. Um, these are of course just examples and the segmentation will be based on, on the data and the responses we get. And once we have, have this segmentation, we can try and explore and extrapolate this um, to provide a view of what the likely mix of and likely future demand for different types of charging and different locations would be. So one, one thing we do a lot at Delta is forecasting. I think forecasting this will be accurately today would be impossible, but we think we can shed more light on it and look at the scenarios and sensitivities and tipping points between the possible scenarios. Thanks, Matty. Um, moving on now. Uh, so just to remind you, the slides will be available and the recording will be available afterwards. Um, so that's one big question. Another really big question uh, that we talked about earlier is in the poll, who's going to capture the value? So just to remind you about the, the value, the market roles, the types of players, the location, the types of customers. We're going to spend a, a little bit of time now looking at uh, where uh, I'm picking the values a bit more, looking at the types of players uh, that can position them, themselves to capture the value, how they might go about this, and what we see emerging in the market today. So Kate, I'll, I'll hand over to you now if you want to say uh, a little bit about the, the direct values. Thanks, John. Um, so we've identified uh, three key types of direct value, uh, and we're thinking specifically about uh, the retailing of electricity uh, and, and additional services for EV customers. So focusing less on the, the physical hardware and the significant investment that's required there. Uh, and we've split that down into, into three areas. So the electricity sales, uh, and within that, uh, we'll be looking in the study in some detail at what tariffs are already available across Europe and where the innovation is around that. Um, but we also have an eye to the reselling of uh, electricity. Uh, so we know that the Alternative Fuels Infrastructure Directive uh, is going to make it much easier for the reselling of, of electricity. So who, who is likely to take advantage of that uh, and techn technologically uh, uh, and in terms of software, how can that be exploited? Uh, and the third area of interest for us is marketplaces, which is a, a relatively new concept um, that uh, Delta Steve will expand uh, quite quite uh, dramatically over the next 10 years around the peer-to-peer -peer, uh, selling of electricity. Um, John, do you want to expand on that? Thanks, Kate. So we're seeing an emergence, and it's really only just an emergence today uh, across uh, with a few companies in Europe experimenting with peer-to-peer -peer models for selling electricity um, and it's, poss it's possible that this will develop, in fact we think it will develop more in the future, whether we ever move to an Uber or Airbnb of energy, I'm not quite sure, but uh, it's not just pure electricity sales, it could be only in the marketplace for electricity for example. Thank you. Um, so, so the second area of direct value is access. This is this is a huge area. So, um, if you think, uh, I think in terms of uh, the number of electric vehicles that are going to be on the road. So, um, when we think about five million uh, electric vehicles on the road, uh, I, I would estimate you're talking about one billion uh, charging events uh, in, a, in a single year associated with those vehicles. So every time a charging event happens, there is an opportunity, of course, to make money uh, from electricity sales, but also from access fees and additional service fees. Uh, as well, of course, as um, a flexibility. So on the access side, this is not an exhaustive list, um, but you've got service fees. Uh, bookability will become increasingly important in providing reassurance that that infrastructure is available for you uh, and, and the extensive back office services that we're already seeing in the marketplace. Flexibility is the third key area of direct value for uh, electricity retailing. Um, 
uh, and we're, we will be looking at who is well poised to offer flexibility services such as smart charging uh, and B2G, B2H and B2X. So whilst there are some really interesting projects in Europe, such as Project Parker in Denmark uh, and other projects starting all the time, and the, the value of the incremental value of flexibility is still work in progress. Uh, and then grayed out indirect value. Again, this is a very, very long list um, that, that, we, that we may consider if we see some interesting business models coming along. Um, it, you know, uh, as an example, a little bit out there, but Tesla talking about um, building cafes at their recharging infrastructure. So it, it could well be that a, a car uh, a car manufacturer ends up uh, retailing coffee. Thanks, Kate. We we just got one question about the acronym V to G, V to H, and V to X. Could you uh, explain mm -hmm. that quickly? Uh, yeah. So um, uh, V to V to H is is probably the um, the, the, the 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 most straightforward. Uh, and and in the, uh, certainly in Japan, uh, this is a, a, an established marketplace where you use your vehicle to store, uh, either store locally your own uh, generated electricity, or in the event of an unstable, uh, an unstable grid uh, and potential blackouts, you can use your vehicle to power your home. Um, the V2G, of course, is bidirectional, so this is when you can start thinking about putting power back into the, the grid. Um, and V2X uh, covers a, a multitude of sins, which is really uh, essentially acknowledging that um, you have a mobile, you have a mobile battery in the form of your vehicle, uh, and you can attach that to multiple sources of, of uh, 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 generation or grid electricity to provide the storage service. Thanks, Kate. Um, keeping on time, and uh, whilst uh, there's lots of interesting content, we want to uh, stick to the, the 40 minutes as much as we can. So let's move on to the next slide here. Um, so this slide uh, shows some our initial thinking on different approaches that electricity retailers can take. Um, Kate, we're conscious of time. Do you want to pull out one or two <laughs> highlights of this of this slide in terms of the points to make? I'll be I'll be as quick as I can. So uh, so really, the graph on the right hand side is is talking about diversity of customers and diversity of value. So the traditional electricity retail space is very much the square on the left. Uh, which is uh, which we would describe as, as passive. So effectively, uh, thinking offering products and services around electric vehicles that are around retaining your existing customer base. And um, but you can uh, of course extend your customer base. You can win new customers and increase the value of your existing customers by uh, by offering uh, reactive services around bundle propositions and energy optimization. And then the really interesting space is if you want to be active, um, that there is a, a whole a whole new area of value uh, which extends uh, to outside of the home and workplace charging, uh, where you can encompass electricity sales, but also access value and, and flexibility. Uh, for us, the key enablers, if you want to become a, 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 an active uh, uh, player, is to consider data and access to customers. Thanks, Kate. So uh, we're going to ask the electricity uh, or the people in the audience who work with utilities uh, in a minute, which of uh, strategy they think their company is adopting. So just have a quick look at the table to remind yourself. And if you work with a utility, uh, we're going to ask you which one of these do you think most represents uh, your utilities strategy? So we'll launch that poll now. And uh, so passively retain customers. So maybe just to offer a tariff to your existing customers. Uh, through at the bottom, actively try and capture customers who are charging at workplace, public destination charging. Uh, or at the bottom, I think this will be the case of some utilities and we can see some votes coming in here, no particular strategy. Um, so we've got the votes going up still. We'll give you another five seconds to vote before we close the poll. 
Uh, okay, last chance, and let's see the results. So, uh, again, quite a mixture. Encouragingly, I think not so many passive, uh, the majority in the active. So uh, some quite ambitious utilities seeing this as a big opportunity to capture new sources of revenue. Uh, but also some still with no strategy yet. So maybe they need to, to well, uh, develop one fairly quickly as the market starts to hot up. So moving on and uh, let's uh, go to the next slide here. So we're a few minutes behind schedule. So we'll be, we'll speed up a little bit. Um, one of the key points here is that is access to customers, as Kate said. So focusing on the, com the companies with the best proposition for the customer will be well placed to win the battle for the customer. Um, Kate, do you want to add a, a few comments on uh, on this slide? Uh, yeah, so uh, it is a really, really complex market uh, place. And so what we've tried to do is is simplify and identify the five key roles that we think will be capturing the, the value. So you have electricity retailers uh, and vehicle manufacturers, um, but also uh, infrastructure hosts. So when we talk about infrastructure hosts, this is where the charging infrastructure is physically located and who owns that land uh, and potentially uh, uh, is, is a network operator also. So network operators are the people who have invested in the physical asset uh, and who own that charging station. Uh, service providers, uh, effectively, uh, or we would call the, the Uber of this marketplace. So they're electromobility providers who do not necessarily own any assets, but merely bring together uh, multiple networks to provide a super, super access network. Uh, we again, you know, we're looking at customer need, uh, and the, the, the companies who are winning the space are the ones who can uh, who can address best, uh, most convenient service at the most achievable cost at the time that, that's suitable for the customer. Matt, have you got some examples of um, providers? Uh, definitely not an exhaustive list. So, uh, as part of the um, Study will be looking at all of these players plus many more across the whole of Europe uh, and really addressing where we see the uh, they, them operating the value chain, who they're partnering with, and looking for examples, real, really good examples of innovation uh, across all of these players. Thanks very much, Kate. Um, so the next slide uh, looks at some of the uh, at four particular companies who we think have got some innovative approaches. We'll actually, I think, um, skip over this slide in terms of the presentation, so you can refer back to this uh, when you look at the slide set. Um, but as Kate said, it's a really wide range of companies, uh, some cases battling head to head, in other cases trying to carve out particular parts of the market themselves. Um, and Moving on to the next slide, this just shows you the, the research that we're carrying out in terms of that, the battle for the customer. On one hand, utilities may win the battle for the customer and see this as a way to uh, grow their business uh, quite substantially, but it's also possible new entrants, players from outside the energy sector will win the battle for the customer and actually take customers away from utilities. So a really, really fascinating space. Uh, moving on now. So uh, we have, we've had one question about will the behavior of driving behavior of customers with internal combustion engine cars be a good indicator for their likely to behavior with electric vehicles? And that's a really good question. And uh, in some ways, uh, of course, it won't be because the cars are different the way the the, the charging needs or refueling needs of the car are different. But what we have found at Delta and uh, David Trevethick, who, who led customer research at British Gas, tells us is that attitudes uh, are fairly stable. So while the behaviors will, of, of course, adapt to circumstances, the underlying attitudes generally don't change. 
And it's those underlying attitudes that we're trying to be clever about uh, getting to those attitudes and then clever about thinking how they might translate to electric vehicle charging. Yeah. And that's where expertise around energy comes in that we can translate then understanding the underlying technology, how those attitudes then can actually turn into an understanding what the charging behavior is likely to be yeah. and how the infrastructure might look like. Yeah. And there are so many other variables like battery electric vehicle or plug-in hybrid electric vehicle and so on. So a difficult topic, but one we're hoping to shed a bit more light on. Okay, um, so this is really a, a summary of uh, our view of the opportunities and threats that we've talked about in today's webinar, and just relating that down to, to what we're actually doing. Um, the quid pro quo of these webinars is we share some of our thinking with you and hopefully give you some new perspectives and new thinking um, in return for telling you about the research that we're doing and the research we're coming up, which you can see at the bottom. Um, and we've got a quick poll here to see if you'd like further information on any of these. Um, and this just helps us target who we follow up with. So if you are interested in any of these, we won't reveal the results. Uh, we will capture your votes. Uh, then just please click now on which topics you're most interested in or whether you'd just like to be kept in touch with our ongoing blogs, articles, research on this topic. Uh, so we'll give you a, another five or 10 seconds to vote here. We, we won't publish the polls. Um, Okay, thank you for those votes. Um, moving on now, uh, so summarizing what we're, we're doing, um, you can keep in touch with uh, the blogs. I've published a few blogs recently on our, our LinkedIn page and on our website. Um, we always like uh, hearing your views, being challenged, having discussions. So uh, we're talking with a number of you already, and if others would like to uh, talk about this topic, then uh, irrespective of whether you're interested in our research or not, we really value those discussions. Um, we'll be telling you more about the research we're doing, publishing it in April and sharing highlights in our, our next webinar and on our blogs. And you can see on the right, bottom right, our upcoming summits, and on the left, how to keep in touch. Um, we had one question, and please keep asking questions. Uh, we've got a couple of minutes for questions. Uh, one around data and what data and why. So data, we think, will be really valuable for, for a number of reasons. In fact, with across all of the work we do, data is going to become a really core competency of anyone that wants to play in the energy sector. But particularly with electric vehicles, data around how and when people charge will be critical to understand what flexibility is available from electric vehicles. And there are some big values that will be uh, obtained from flexibility. So if you don't have that data, you're going to find it hard to understand how much flexibility is available and therefore how you can monetize that flexibility. And also not disrupt the customer experience around charging. So do it in a way that does not impede with the, with the experience of the EV, uh, EV user as well. Exactly. Um, data will also be critical for uh, investing in charging infrastructure in the right places and the right amounts. And we see lots of potential here for some stranded, stranded investments, difficult decision making around those investments. But the more data, the better uh, those decisions will be about either where new charging infrastructure is put in place or how networks are reinforced and so on. Um, we had a question about... Uh, Autonomous vehicles, mobility as a service, and yes, that will be a big factor in this area. Probably, well, I'm rubbing my crystal ball and trying to gaze into it uh, more towards the end of the time period we're looking at, which is in the 2020s and the beginning. Um, at the moment, we feel we've got enough uncertainties to play with without thinking about uh, mobility as a service uh, disruption as well, but that will be something we'll be looking at in our ongoing research. So we're almost at the 45 minute mark now. So uh, as I said, we'll send you a link to the slides and the webinar recording. Please do get in touch with us if you've got questions. If you've got questions we haven't answered, we'll follow up with you. 
and we're really excited about this area and sharing our uh, what we're doing and what we're finding which we'll do uh, through our blogs website and webinars so thank you all for your time i hope you found it a useful use of your time and uh, look forward to keeping in touch with you over the next months thanks very much everyone thanks everyone bye bye thank you bye bye Thank you.